In this video tutorial, I just wanted to show real quick how I take a uh, image that I found on the uh, web and how I turn it into an embroidery file that I can uh, then embroider with the embroidery machine. Um, this is uh, and this is just going to go over just the video editing and then the digitizing of the uh, the graphic. Um, I just chose. I, I did a search. Uh, this was for a friend for a Halloween costume. She wanted uh, her daughter to go as Hermione from uh, Harry Potter, and so she asked for a Gryffindor patch. They had a whole bunch of different Gryffindor patches uh, on Google Images when I searched, but I chose this one specifically because it was pretty simplified. Uh, it didn't have a lot of shading. You know, these little darker areas here are very distinct from the lighter areas. So it looked like it would be something that most of the hard work would already be done. I wouldn't have to worry too much about it. <clears throat> there was uh, some of these watermarks in there, but that, that's actually not going to matter too much. I was able to clean uh, quite a bit of that up. You don't have to do a super great job. Uh, I was able to just take out enough of them with the, um, the little uh, paintbrush tool. Uh, you know, I just kind of was able to, to paint over them and get a solid enough color that the digitizer would do a good job of matching it. Uh, my final uh, image that I edited ended up looking like this, and I know uh, at first this looks like crazy, this isn't going to work, uh, but I did this specifically because we were going to put the patch on a black background. So to save from having to embroider all these areas in black that are in the background, I took all the black and I picked a, a background color, this really bright green, because my digitizer is going to ask me, do I want to remove the background color? So I just picked a color that I knew I didn't want to use, bright green. I'm not using that anywhere in the design. So I use that as my background. So anywhere where you see bright green, it just won't embroider. It'll just be uh, uh, nothing there. And so since I'm using black material, all these areas will end up black that are back behind the patch. And then this big black border around it, I actually will use embroidery material because this is going to be a patch and you want to have that nice uh, finished edge on the patch. So I just uh, made a uh, shape around there using Photoshop and uh, put a stroke on that so that it made it nice and thick. Uh, just kind of eyeballed it to where I thought, well, that'd look like a good uh, amount for a uh, patch to have uh, for the outside part. Uh, I also simplified some of the colors. You can notice in the original, for instance, there's some blues here. Uh, I realized, you know, for that amount of blue, I just didn't care to change the thread. Uh, these letters right here where it says Gryffindor, they're very skinny. Uh, just from experience, I thought that's probably not going to uh, embroider very well that skinny. So if you look on my edited one, I got rid of all the little blue parts. The nails were blue. The tongue was blue. These little parts here, I just turned them this dark gray color. And then I re... Uh, redid the uh, the lettering to be a little bit thicker, uh, heavier font, so that it would uh, show up better with the embroidery. Uh, and then I left all these other parts pretty well the same. I just got rid of all the black parts, and so uh, again, just left that. So then I saved this as a JPEG, and once I had this saved as a JPEG, I uh, sent it over. I, I work on a Mac, uh, but the embroidery software only works on a PC, so I, I sent it over to uh, my... Uh, I have... Uh, uh, virtual environment running Windows 7 on this uh, Mac and so I sent it over here to my uh, virtual environment uh, of Windows 7 where I've got my uh, both of my uh, embroidery software programs that I like to use. Now first to digitize it uh, I'm going to use this click and stitch uh, extra. Uh, I don't think this is available anymore. This is I, I believe kind of like abandoned where they've just kind of moved on, they've done something else uh, the same company who makes this makes another program very similar you can still go find. Uh, so I don't know if you'd be able to find this click and stitch anymore, but if, uh, the step should be pretty similar to whatever digitizing software you have. You're just going to open it up, and in this one specifically, this little wizard hat is the auto-digitize uh, button. I click on that, brings up this little wizard guy. I say I want to select an image. I'm going to go in here. There's the image where I saved it. So I click on that. And I go to my next. I know my hoop size on the embroidery machine is 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters, or around 4 inches square. Uh, so the largest uh, uh, dimension there, I'm going to just turn to 100, just so I can get the biggest patch possible. So it's, it's going to turn it 100 high by 88.5 millimeters wide. Um, you know, whatever your machine uses, that's what you're going to have to uh, figure out when you set up your hoop, uh, uh, when you're setting up your software, but that's for uh, this particular, we have a Brother SE400 uh, embroidery machine. Uh, so that looks good, it's, it's well within that, uh, you know, 100 by 100 millimeter range, I hit next, 
and then this is the part where it automatically is, you know, splits up all the colors and figures out how it's going to cut it out. Uh, I leave the number one, that big uh, background color, because that's automatically in the next step. It's going to say, hey, I see that's a background. Let me let me take that out. Um, but see, it's got some, you know, quite a few grays here. And so I know I really only want to split it up into a light gray and a dark gray. So I'm going to get rid of these last two grays. I'm going to just select it and hit delete. Select that one, hit delete. This little lighter gray, while it does add some stuff into the helmet and a little bit on the tail and a little bit on the paws, it's not enough to hassle with changing the thread for that. So I'm going to get rid of that as well. It'll just make it easier. That way I'll only have uh, seven colors, even though it shows eight, since number one, the uh, green color, is going to uh, be uh, removed. Um, uh, it's only going to be seven colors that we're going to have to switch to make this uh, you can order it right now if you'd like. I know, for instance, I always like to do the border last, and so I'll end up putting this black one last, but probably I'll do this yellow uh, first, and so we'll put the brighter yellow in that, you know, number one spot. Well, number two, but number one for uh, after the background gets taken away. Then we'll take the uh, darker yellow and move it up next. Probably we'll do the reds next after that. Uh, then I probably do the grays, and then that leaves that black as the last one. Now, as you can see, nothing's really changed on this preview. I actually have to click this button here, and it'll show that's more of the preview of what it's going to look like with the edited uh, uh, changes that we made with those, getting rid of some of those colors. Uh, if I don't like the way that looks, or if something's being rendered wrong, I can actually hit this little edit image. It will load up uh, the image into Microsoft Paint. It's not the greatest program for this, but if I'm only making basic edits, you know, if all I have to do is take the paint bucket and fill one of these little spots with a different color. It's good enough. And then you just would save it and you would close it and it would update automatically with the updated one. Since I'm, I'm happy with this, I'm not going to bother uh, editing it. Uh, but I'll just go to the next screen. Uh, it gives me a little render of the vector that it created, the tolerance value. I'm actually, I never really play with that. It does a pretty good job on its own. It shows me here, I'm looking, everything looks good. It's detected that that green color right there. It says, hey, that's the background. I'm going to get rid of it. You can check this box if you say, no, I actually want it to uh, stitch that green color, but I specifically made it so I wouldn't have to. And so I'm going to leave that unchecked. Uh, you could, you know, manipulate these, change the outlines, all that kind of stuff. Everything looks good to me though with this. I rarely ever have to play around with these settings. Usually the most I'd have to do is, is as long as you do a pretty decent job in your editing, uh, image editing program, you're not going to have to play around with these too much. And uh, your image editing program is going to be much more powerful and easy to uh, manipulate than using these settings here. So then I'm just going to hit next and then it asks me for the material uh, style. I usually just use normal because when we're making patches we just do a little piece of cotton with some stabilizer back behind it and that's good enough. I have done uh, on t-shirts and things like that so coming down here to the t-shirt it does uh, uh, arrange the stitches a little bit differently uh, to make sure that the, um, uh, the stitches are placed correctly on that stretchier material. You still have to use a stabilizer on it uh, but uh, for most applications, this normal one is fine. Again, most of these other things I don't bother with. Uh, you know, everything should be set by default to just what you need. And then you hit finish. Now, because this is a really complex uh, image, this is going to take a little while. I'll speed this up in the video so you don't have to wait for this to uh, to finish. Uh, oh, there it goes. Uh, but it to automatically finish. Now, the first thing I notice here is it didn't pick the colors I really wanted, but it still looks pretty good. It gives me a, a nice little uh, realistic preview of what the stitches are going to look like. Looks fine. Uh, I'm not going to bother changing the colors here. I could right here change the colors to what I want, but I actually prefer to do my uh, color layout uh, changes in the Brother software. I hate their digitizer on, on this version. I haven't tried their latest one, but this is the version 7, uh, their old software. The digitizer doesn't do a great job. Uh, so I like the digitizer for the click and stitch, and then to take it after this, so I'll just hit File, and I'll hit Save As. And we'll name it, you know, Gryffindor. Right, right there, we can put it uh, Gryffindor Black Material. Uh, I'm saving it as a .pes. That's the uh, file type for my machine, uh, and it's for many other uh, uh, machines out there as well. So I'm going to hit Save. And then now that's saved, I can open up this uh, this Brother software. And I'll open this up in here. 
and there's my Gryffindor patch there. So I'll hit open and it brings it in here to the Brother software. Now, it's not like this software is fantastic, but I do like it better for the color layout and some of the digitizing options and things like that. Since it's made for Brother, I don't know if that makes it just work better or whatever. But here in this little uh, button up at the top that has little one, two, three, um, you can set the, the uh, different colors, and this is also where it will set on your machine when it tells you to change to a different color. This is where it's going to tell you. And so for mine, uh, and for the preview, the little uh, show here on here, uh, it'll change, update the colors for that as well. Because as you can see, it, it looks very uh, black and yellow, basically. Um, so I'm going to pick uh, on this uh, color, for instance, I'm going to come down here to the little thread uh, color uh, icon, click that, and I'll probably change that to something, you know, a little more yellow. Uh, maybe this Harvest Gold right here. I think that's the color we have uh, on hand. Uh, it doesn't matter if you, I mean, if you just get something that looks pretty close, it'll help you when you're changing your colors. Obviously, you can load whatever color you want. Um, here I'll do, you know, maybe this little russet brown, uh, you know, one for, it's just this little area here on the little uh, marquee for the Gryffindor. Uh, this next part is the red. Uh, for whatever reason, it picked a dark brown. <laughs> Um, I guess it's one that is not in their brother uh, library, but I'll just pick this red one. Uh, it's just from the color. I know that's going to be the one that's going to supposed to be red. And then this is a uh, darker red. Um, I think the closest we have in our collection of threads right now is this little kind of dark fuchsia color. It looks kind of purpley to me. I don't really know that. I'm not very familiar with that color, but a maroon would probably be the best if you had it. Uh, and then here is, uh, you know, uh, a silvery uh, gray, you know, color for that. And then this is kind of a pewter, darker um, gray. And then this last part, it's fine, it's just black. And so then I'll hit OK. That's, I've got it ordered the way I want it. I want it to sew this color first, then this color, then the reds, then the grays, then the blacks. And so I'm happy with the order, because otherwise I could change these, I could drag this over and say, okay, I want that one done there. But I don't, I've got them in the order I want it to sew in. I've got the color set up the way I want. I can hit okay. I can even come up here to this little realistic preview button, and it'll give me a realistic preview. Now again, it's not gonna be fantastic because it doesn't have that black background. It's got the white background there wherever um, uh, the black is going to be since I'm using black material. But this at least gives me a pretty good idea that yes, this is gonna look fine. This will work out okay. Um, we, uh, I'm gonna uh, pause the video here and then I'll, uh, I'll get my camera and I'll show you the uh, final patch that we actually ended up uh, cutting or uh, uh, embroidering just a little while ago. Okay, uh, one last thing I wanted to show uh, here as well is the, uh, the this is my specific machine, the Brother SE400. Uh, when I got this for my wife, um, we looked at it and it said that it only supported uh, PC, um, but I'd read some uh, reviews online that said you could use it with a Mac, and we use a Mac, and even though I have this Windows virtual environment that I run on my Mac, uh, I really you know prefer to, to use uh, everything with a, uh, a Mac, natively if I can. Um, and so uh, I just wanted to show you that if you do have um, a Mac and you've got this uh, this machine, you can still use it. Uh, you can't use those programs like I showed you, those are uh, Windows only, but actually loading uh, the, the, the embroidery files onto your machine, I'll show you real quick how that works. If you look here, I've got this embroidery file that we just finished, this uh, Gryffindor Black Material PES. Um, this uh, file, that's the embroidery file, uh, I need to put it on the machine itself. And so I pulled up a little finder window, like the little file explorer uh, equivalent for uh, Mac. And you'll see here on the devices. Right now I have the machine turned off, but I'm going to reach over here and I'm going to turn the machine on. And so I just turned on the sewing machine, and if you look over here under devices, in a second, a new device should populate in there that says no name. Uh, oh, I've got to plug the USB into the back. Okay, now I've plugged that into the back of the computer. I'm going to tell it I want to use it with a Mac, not the Windows uh, environment, so I'm going to go uh, hit there. And now there's this new little option called no name that has popped up. So if I come over here to this no name and, and load it, there's nothing in there. But I can take this uh, file that we just made, the uh, Gryffindor uh, black material, and I can just copy it over there. Now, 
on the machine, there's a little button that says, it looks like a little pocket with an arrow coming out or something like that. Uh, if I look in there, it'll now show that uh, PES file. Uh, so depending on your machine, some machines use cards. Uh, this one, uh, it's nice. You can just hook it up with a USB cable, uh, like a printer to your uh, your Mac or your PC. Uh, but uh, it works differently with a, a PC. You know, it's natively supported. But here with a uh, Mac, I just wanted to show you it is possible to uh, use uh, this this embroidery machine with a Mac. Uh, it's just a little bit of a, a workaround where you have to drag it on after you uh, plug it in and it comes up as a no name. Uh, now I'll uh, show you the finished file. Okay, here is the finished patch. We've uh, gone through and uh, in the, uh, yeah, I'll put a link here as well that shows the process of making uh, these embroidered files into patches, uh, the uh, little steps that you have to take, but uh, this just shows uh, the, uh, the quality of that little digitized um, image that I just pulled off of Google. It does a pretty good job. Um, you know, it's not perfect. Uh, I don't think, um, you know, this would replace, you know, every application for a professional embroidery machine. But for the most part, you can see it does a really good job. That is just the little backing to our uh, iron-on material so that this is an iron-on patch uh, on the back. I can peel that off. If I peel it off, it just shows the uh, the stitches and everything. There's the little kind of shiny uh, backing is uh, what makes it iron-on. Um, but uh, there it is, all ready to go. My friend will be able to put that on her uh, daughter's uh, little uh, Halloween robe for her Hermione uh, outfit. Um, but uh, it'll work good. She'll have a little Gryffindor patch, and, and it wasn't that much work to go out to Google, get a picture, digitize it real quick, and then have the machine just um, uh, spit it out real quick. So. Uh, it's a great, uh, fun little uh, uh, thing to do with your embroidery machine. If you've got an embroidery machine, you don't know what to do with it. Uh, making these patches is incredibly addictive. We've got all our kids. Uh, um, we've been making them little patches for chores, for you know projects, for our little family night activities. All the different little things that we do, we'll, we'll make little patches that they can earn, uh, and uh, they've been loving it. So uh, it's a great little thing. Hope you have fun with it.